So this lecture includes coagulation panel interpretation, and this is really just the abbreviated coagulation panel, which mostly includes PT and PTT, and I'm also going to mention ACT again. So let's start off with talking about um, where you have an increase, so our PTT is increased, and we have a normal PT. So we look at our PT and our PTT, right? So in this case, we're just saying that our PTT is increased, but, and that of course tests, tests our intrinsic and common pathways, meaning that if anything's abnormal in either of those pathways, your PT is gonna be prolonged. But we just said that we have a normal PT. So if you have one normal or the other normal, while well, the other one's prolonged, it means that your common pathway is normal. So you essentially rule out anything being wrong in your common pathway when either test is normal. And because your PT is normal, you also know that your extrinsic path is normal. And so keeping that in mind, we can therefore rule out any of these parts of our coagulation panel. And that really narrows us down to our intrinsic pathway. And a few things to know about the intrinsic pathway is factor 12 deficiency is an inherited disease in cats, but we don't see clinical bleeding associated with it. So you might pick up these guys during if you were uh, assessing or trying to determine reference ranges or you had a study going on. Factor 11 deficiency is rare. We see it in a few herds of Holsteins and dogs, exceedingly rare. But what is more common are factor eight and nine deficiency, and these are the hemophilias. And not are they the hemophilias, but they are X-linked diseases. And so I know we always have to think about this, meaning that young male animals are affected. And so they tend to be affected very early in life, and you see bleeding potentially secondary to um, unknown trauma or um, secondary to a neuter, maybe severe, severe bleeding following a neuter, um, and that sort of thing. So it's a congenital inherited disease, um, and hemophilia 8 is A, and that's the more common one, uh, and hemophilia 9 um, is hemophilia B, or factor deficiency 9 is hemophilia B, but again, 8 is more common. Uh, how you would actually differentiate these is, well, one, you're going to have just an elevated PTT, like we said, in a normal PT. And the other thing is you can actually do factor levels if you were curious enough to find out what was going on. And these fa factor levels can be anywhere from essentially less than 1% to a normal factor level can be like greater than 130%. Um, and so they'll give you a reference range when, we actually, when you actually order it if you do it'll be very low, um, often less than 1%, but usually it's what we say is less than 70 or so percent. Remember that PTT only prolongs when there's greater than 75% loss of factors. So ACT won't be prolonged unless, again, there's greater than 95% loss. So that's when you'd see an increase in your ACT. So one other thing important to realize, so that ACT will be prolonged in these same conditions, and again, hemophilia is going to be the most common one with just your PTT elevation. Um, however, if you have, again, greater than 95% loss of one of those, you're going to have a prolonged ACT. Now, there is an instance where your ACT will be increased, but you'll have a normal PTT. Remember, the ACT is just that diatomaceous earth, and that's when you have a platelet count that's less than 10,000. So you have less than uh, 10,000 platelets, and that's because you need the platelets actually in the tube to, uh, to work. So in that case, your PTT would be normal, it's not reliant on platelets, and your ACT would be prolonged. All right, so here's the situation where we have just an increase in our PT. We have a normal PTT, and you probably wouldn't do an ACT in this case. And so, same rule. So in this case, we can rule out the common pathway because one of them is normal. And we know it's not intrinsic, so we can erase all of these. So we're going to erase all of those. And that leaves us factor 7 and tissue factor. And so um, we see factor 7 deficiency as an inherited disease um, in, that's not an E, an inherited disease in beagles, and it tends to cause a mild coagulopathy. This isn't like a serious issue. 
The bigger thing is that an early vitamin K antagonism, because factor seven has the shortest half-life, uh, and vitamin K, remember it's circled in green, so that must mean it's a vitamin K dependent factor. So um, since set factor seven has the shortest half-life of all the factors, um, it goes away first. And so PT will prolong before PTT in rodenticide vitamin K antagonism, which we're going to talk about in a second. So again, inherited in some beagles and then early vitamin K antagonism. Now, in a bleeding animal, that's not that's not early. That means it's happened and all factors have been prolonged. But this, you might actually use this for monitoring the animal. You might just test PT to save money. So the last one we're really going to focus on is where you have an increase in PT and you have an increase in PTT. So a few things to realize is that one, you don't have inherited abnormalities of multiple clotting factors. So you don't have an inherited deficiency of multiple clotting factors. So these are usually acquired causes that cause increases in both. Um, and so a few to think of, the most common one that you're going to see is vitamin K antagonism or absence. And this is due to coumarin or coumadin or warfarin. Actually, I'll write it as warfarin. I think more people are familiar with that. Warfarin containing rodenticides. And you'll learn in toxicology about various rodenticides. And these are the ones that make the rodents and our pets um, bleed. So these are, not, these are not the ones that have anything to do with calcium. I cannot write today. So rodenticides. So um, warfarin contained rodenticides. So again, the green factors, right? Seven, so two, seven, nine, and ten, those are our green vitamin K factors. Um, so in that case, the rodenticide antagonizes them becoming activated, so multiple pathways are affected. These guys can prevent present with acute hemorrhage, it can be relatively secret hemorrhage in a cavity, or it can be overt, and it can be fatal if not diagnosed and treated. All right, the second cause is where actually um, most factors are made. And so liver failure, since factors are made in the liver, when you have end-stage liver failure, you're not going to be able to make clotting factors. We'll talk about this later on, but things that you would look for are in abnormal indirect liver function tests. So the liver makes glucose, so you would see a decrease in glucose. The liver converts ammonia to urea, so you would see a decrease in urea. Um, the liver makes albumin, so you'd see a decrease in albumin and a decrease in cholesterol. Uh, and these would all usually happen together. And there could be other things. And again, a prolong in PT and PTT. So the last cause that, can, that tends to cause an increase in both PT and PTT is something called DIC. And we're actually going to talk more about this in... Um, the next lecture. So this is disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, and it's essentially the due to various things, and I'll tell you about those in the next lecture for the next class, uh, your clotting factor, your clotting system's overactive, and so it starts making lots of clots, and while it makes all those clots, it consumes many clotting factors, so you essentially, essentially get consumption of clotting factors and overproduction of, um, of clots, it consumes platelets. So you'll see a prolongation in PT and TT, PTT. You tend to see low platelets, and this can be mild to severe. Uh, you'll see an increase in something called D-dimers, which I'll teach you about. That is not working. Let's try that, D-dimers. Uh, and you'll see schistocytes. And we've talked a little bit about schistocytes, but these guys are fragmented or sheared red blood cells, and that's due to the fact that all these clots made in the body, when the red cells try and traverse them, they get sort of sheared and, and destroyed.